We've seen the span of two vectors before, but let's take a closer look and investigate whether the span of a couple vectors is going to be a subspace. So what I have here is I've got a plane. This is living in R3 now, and the plane is this two-dimensional thing that's sort of cutting through. It's a subset of R3. And I've specified two different vectors, A and B, that are going to be on this particular plane. Now, what is the span of A and B? Well, the span of A and B is all the ways I can take a linear combination of A and B. So why don't I look at just this one here, which is A plus B, and I'll add it up tip to tail. And you can sort of visualize that it's ended up back on the plane. Now, if I choose some vector that is in the span, okay, what about this green one, this X vector? This is in the span because it's a linear combination of the A and B, in particular it's A plus B. And then I can imagine all the different X's that look like this. Look, I'm just going to send my X all around this plane in a bunch of different ways. And what you can see is that wherever the X goes, I can add some multiple of A to some multiple of B. I might have to do some stretching, but some linear combination of the A and B is going to equal to this X factor no matter where the X vector is. So this is my sort of visual picture that the span of two vectors sweeps out an entire plane. Just in the same way the span of one vector becomes a line, it's all the multiples of one vector is just a line, the span of two different vectors is going to look like a plane, at least almost always. If the two vectors lined up on the same line or if one of the vectors was zero, that wouldn't be the case. But, but as long as there's a little angle between them, they generate some plane. Now, my question is this. Is this span, is this plane, a subspace of R3? Well, my argument is going to be that the span of any vectors is always going to be a subspace. And I want you to think about it like this. Subspaces were things where vector addition and scalar multiplication played nice, where you could go and you could take linear combinations of vectors and you'd still be in the space. But the span is defined to be linear combinations. The span is just all of the ways you can add vectors and you can stretch vectors out. It, we're sort of saying almost the exact same thing. The span is almost by definition a subspace. But I do have to do a little bit of work here. So let me give the rigorous proof of this. My claim is span is going to be a subspace. That means I have three different conditions to check. Now, first of all, I want to show that the zero vector is on here. So what do I do? How do I write the zero vector as a linear combination of A and B? Well, it's a linear combination where you take zero A and zero B, that's going to give me the zero vector. So indeed, I have my first property. All right, wonderful. Now let's continue. Let's go and look at the second property. So let me take one vector X. It's written as a linear combination of the A and the B. I've written it as S1A and S2B. Now I want to multiply it by a scalar. So let's come along here and I multiply it by a scalar C. But because of the way linearity works, is I can just take the C and I can distribute it over the vector addition and because it comes a constant CS1 times A and a constant CS2 times B. Well, what's this? This is just a linear combination of A and B. It's just got different coefficients. So indeed, we have the second property also being true. Looking pretty good. Third property. Now I want to take two different vectors. So I've got the X that I had before, but now I'm going to add a Y, which is a different linear combination of A and B. So I've got this X and this Y both in the span, both linear combinations. And then what I want to do is I want to add them up together so I can just go and add them and I'm going to substitute in what I have so I get the one vector plus another. Now, again, I want to apply linearity of vector addition and scalar multiplication. I can rearrange this. I've got all the different rules of being a vector space. Let's put all of the coefficients to S together and the coefficients of B together. So what do I get? I get the S1 plus T1 a coefficient times the A, plus S2 plus T2, a different coefficient, times the B. So this is just a linear combination of A and B. It's coefficients multiplied by the vectors and then added up. So indeed, that's the third property. And indeed, we've shown that the span is going to be a subspace, no matter what it is. Likewise, you could extend this to the span of any number of vectors being a subspace. Now, a nod to the future. We just showed that the span was a subspace. We've seen other space, subspaces like lines and everything and the zero vector. Well, what we're going to do in the future is we're going to argue the other way around. That if you have any subspace, no matter what, any subspace, that in fact that subspace can be written as the span of a finite number of vectors. There are no subspaces that are not spans of some list of vectors. Which is really interesting because then you're saying, well, if I've got a subspace, what's the list of vectors that makes it a span? 
So that's what we're going to see in the future.